So hello everybody, my name is Ruth Pozuelo from Corval.com and in today's video I'm going to go through all the updates and announcements that Microsoft made at Ignite for Power BI. Let's get started. Team integration with Power BI is now generally available. So if you've been waiting for that, you can now start rolling it out. You can automatically do that, remember that. And with that, they have announced a few more features. The first feature is you will be able to pin a report into Teams, into a Teams channel directly from Power BI, which is quite nice. This is, I think, it's been rolled out, so if you don't find it yet, just wait for a little. They've also reminded us that it is possible now to create, easily create, a Power BI report of your Teams activities, so the things that you do in Teams. How many times you spend on meetings, how often do you share your screen, things like that. So if you're interested, give it a go. They have also made some announcements on Goals. Goals, it allows you to create KPIs on Power BI service, and it's only premium premium. So it's not premium per use, it's like super premium, the $50,000 premium. So one of the things that they have announced is that it's going to be available on the desktop. I'm not sure how is that going to work when you need a premium account for that, but we will see. They do have now, or they will launch, a new visual for goals on Power BI Desktop. So about the integration between Power BI and Excel, we have some news there. Now, if you're on Power BI service, this doesn't work on the desktop, only on the service. If you're in Power BI service and use export to Excel, you now have the option to choose keep current layout which will basically do, for example, if you have a matrix in Power BI and you downloaded it before, you would download the raw data, now it will keep the layout, it will keep the matrix, so you don't have to rebuild the report again. And they have also announced that if you are working on Excel for the web, you will now be able to connect to a Power BI data set directly from the Power Pivot button, okay? But it is for Excel web, remember that. They have talked also about Purview. So Purview is basically a service that will give you the ability to scan your Power BI tenant and then make all the assets searchable and discoverable, also the metadata. But I think that the biggest value for this is for organizations that need to have sensitivity labels applied to their data. So the reason I'm saying that is because by scanning all the assets that you have on Power BI, you will be able to tag with sensitivity labels and the sensitivity labels will be kept as the data is moved downstream or moving to other programs. Let me show you a clip of how that would work. And uh, when end user consumes a report, they can see that the data in this report is highly confidential internal only and treated uh, carefully. And when the users continue uh, using Power BI data outside of Power BI, for example, when they export the data to Excel file, the sensitivity label applied on Power BI report automatically applied on the Excel file with the protection policy defined for this label. And uh, so any user that will consume this data in Excel will also know that the data is highly confidential internal only and unauthorized users won't be able to access this data. So last but not least, I want to talk about hybrid tables. This is really, really good if you have any Internet of Things device that you know produces massive amounts of data or you have massive amounts of data with live data. So what this does is it creates a table that is divided into an imported part and a direct query part. So the imported part is where you get your historical data, and the direct query is the one that will allow to get new data without refreshing the entire table for everything that is happening live. And I'm going to show you a demo here that they show in Ignite, so you get a bit inspired, hopefully. There are some cases where you'll want to cache the data into memory instead of in your data warehouse. For that, we have the large models feature. But of course, if data changes in the data warehouse, you need to refresh the data set, and that can add latency and management overhead. So we're redefining this with hybrid tables, which will give you the best of both worlds. You can cache massive amounts of historical data in the same table with the same business definitions, allowing you to add a direct query partition for the most recent data. So you can see data changes without having to refresh the data set. Let's go back to the New York taxi data set. Here we have the trip count measure, 
which simply gives us the count of the rows in the trip table. Everything's processing smoothly. Now, when dragging and dropping three billion rows of data onto this canvas, I'm still getting instant response times. Now let's visualize this on a map and break out the revenue per trip by the top 10 zip codes. And look, I can quickly see the pickup location with the highest revenue per trip, it's JFK. And I can quickly zoom into the individual pickup locations. I've in seconds gone from the 3 billion row aggregated sell value all the way down to the individual pickup locations representing a single row in the table. And if the data changes in the data warehouse, you'd think you'd have to refresh the data set, right? Well, let's find out. If I filter this just by the last two minutes in JFK and refresh the page every second, we can see the data changing in real time. This is possible because of hybrid tables and incremental refresh. So this is all for me. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if I miss any important announcement. Let me know what your favorite announcement has been, if you're missing anything, and I will see you again on the next video. Take care.